All right, Coach, now that it's been uh, three days, right? Three days of practice, and uh, today was an off day. What are you seeing out there as your team is about to embark on their first year in the Big 12? Yeah, we've got three practices under our belt, uh, one with pads, two with helmet only. Uh, you know, I told the guys the other day that you know, we're off to a good start, just really working on building the foundation. Um, and uh, I really like our leadership. I like our staff. We'll have our first scrimmage on Sunday, and I think that'll tell us a lot. What are you hoping to see in that first scrimmage? I know it's just the first yeah. one, but what are you hoping to see in yeah. that? The first one's going to be a critical scrimmage just from the standpoint of we have quite a bit of depth. Uh, it'll be good for us to kind of judge, you know, who's ready, who's not, um, you know, things like that. The first scrimmage is always uh, a fairly basic scrimmage, so we can really evaluate our guys. And so. Really looking forward to that on, on Sunday. I'm just talking to Javon um, and some of the other wide receivers about um, the confidence that John Rice has this year. What are specific things that you've seen that he's improved on from last year to this? Yeah, uh, John Rice has improved just really the overall aspect of, of playing quarterback, playing uh, in the system, uh, understanding the little things. I mean, you got to understand this time last year, he was still learning. You he played receiver the, the year and a half before that. Uh, he is playing with a lot of confidence. Uh, he is making all the throws. Uh, you know, he understands when to put touch on the ball. He understands protections and getting everything straight. And then probably more than anything, just being being our team leader. And everything that it takes to do that, he has earned the respect of every one of his teammates, uh, every one of his coaches. Um, and I think that's probably the most important thing. Now that he's going to go through, he went through his first year really as a full-time starting quarterback. He had not been that before. Like you said, he had been a wide receiver coming in. I mean, how much of a step up? I mean, it's we talk about John Rice being an older player, but he doesn't have the experience in some respects and the reps that other quarterbacks have. I mean, how much of a jump do you think we're going to see? Yeah, yeah, it, it's like night and day, like I said, compared to this time last year. I think the sky's the limit for him. It's really going to be about – him staying healthy you know I, I ran him a little too much last year uh, we got a really good plan uh, for him this year as far as but the bottom line is uh, we're going to be more balanced uh, we talked about throwing the ball vertically down the field uh, he is very very accurate with that uh, you know he's a playmaker you know I've been real fortunate to have some real playmakers in the past and he fits in that that uh, you know that that role a couple of the guys have been saying things like, we have no respect until we actually go out there and yeah. earn it. Is that something that you've been kind of pushing, that kind of idea that, you know, we're coming into this conference, but we haven't made yeah. our place just yet? That, that's exactly right. I mean, we got to earn everything that, that we get. I mean, we're in a new conference. Uh, you know, I don't believe we have anybody on the all-conference, coat, all that, or we're not ranked that. We don't need to. we got to earn everything we get, and that's really our mindset. And uh, you know, we're coming in a really good conference, really good teams, really good players. And just having that, that uh, something to prove, chip on our shoulder, earning what we get, really that's who we are. Some of your players have also mentioned that they've kind of taken a moment to realize that they're in a special moment in history with you guys. They're the only team that can say that, hey, we were the first Big 12 team. Have you allowed yourself to reflect as well of just realizing how special this time is? Yeah, yeah. We talked about the very first night of fall camp. Uh, just that it's bigger than us. Um, you know, this year is about playing for every player and every coach that helped us get to this point. And we don't just want to be a member of the Big Red. Like, we want to compete for championships. And, you know, that would be extremely hard. There's no doubt about that. But, uh, you know, that's our goal. And that's what we're talking about. It is a big moment uh, this season in a lot of different areas. Did you pick up any uh, pass rushing tips or players the last couple of days? Yeah, SJ put that uh, – that, uh, that video out and, you know the sad thing about it in my mind I really felt like I looked a lot better and uh, a lot of my former players and, and friends have been uh, commenting on that to me in, in uh, text so not real happy with SJ right now but it is what it is. So some of the guys talked about that they're confident going into this new conference because you have power five experience, power five experience in the staff and whatnot. How much of an advantage can that be from a comfort level? Yeah, I, I think we, we do have a staff that uh, has been power five and, and had success in a power five. We also have, you know, quite a few players, transfers that have been in 
Power Five and had success, and some of you even won championships. So I think anytime you have that experience, that uh, you can give the wisdom to the rest of the group and what it takes, uh, I think is real important. As a follow to that, what would you say it takes to achieve success at this level of competition? Uh, I mean, it, it's every day bringing your A game. Uh, it's every day improving. I mean, the number one thing is talent. Uh, I really feel like we have a talented roster, but talent only gets you so far. Uh, just taking it one game at a time. I know that sounds like coach speak, but that truly is what it is. And, you know, we've got six road games. I think we travel more air miles than any team in college football. And so what we have to do is we've got to be the closest team. Um, we have to be the most prepared team in end of game scenarios because you go on the road, there's a good chance it's going down to the end if you got a chance to win. So that's really what we've been talking about. So when you look at your defensive line, how glad are you that you don't have to game plan against those guys? You got some talent from yeah. end to end, and especially yeah. in the middle. Yeah, I think I think it's real important anytime you go up a level, you have to be, uh, you have to have quality depth on the offense and defensive lines. Uh, our defensive line, I'm real proud of. You know, I, uh, other league I was in, I would put this group right in the middle of that. We got some really talented guys, and I think we have some quality depth on the defensive side. And, you know, iron sharpens iron. We got a really good offensive line, I feel like, too. So I feel really good in that, in those two positions going into this new league. Speaking of all that travel, when you get to the season, do you change up some things knowing that you might be playing a Saturday night game and not be getting back till the wee hours in the morning? Do you yeah. kind of change your preparation or just cross that bridge when you yeah. get to the season? No, schedule? we just got to be prepared. We're going to try to keep the same routine as you can about when you leave. Really, it's about when you get in late and just being very strategic on those Sundays, making sure your guys are fresh mentally and physically and maybe not lifting that day, maybe having a short practice early in the season when usually it's late. And so we've thought through that and talked about that, and uh, we'll be very strategic when we get back. In establishing what you wanted to do here, was there any particular aspect that was done with the mindset of we're eventually going to become <laughs> Power 5, we need to step this up? even more than normal. Yeah, and I've said it before, but when I took the job, I knew there was a good chance we were going to the Power Five. Um, just didn't know it was going to be the Big 12. We've had over a year to, to get ready for that. It's helped recruiting tremendously. Uh, the O-line and D-line quality depth, that's really what stands out to me. I do feel like even with our other positions, we have more quality depth. And so that was been, that is by design and uh, feel as good as you can, you know, pre you know preseason as far as that goes. The Big 12 cool. continues to expand. Uh, Colorado's been added. What do you feel as though that still brings to the league? And what do you think about further expansion talks as they continue to develop? To about Colorado? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, Deion's done a great job with, you know, getting a lot of attention with the program. I mean, I, to be honest with you, I'll cross that bridge next year. I got my hands full with what's going on this year. And I, I y'all probably know more about all this expansion than me, to be honest with you. Um, you know, we'll, whoever that we add or whatever, we'll be, we'll be ready to go. Coach, with your new role at uh, giving play calling duties to Coach Hinshaw, what do you feel like you're now in a much better position to kind of better respond to the rapidly changing world of college athletics, whether it's on a conference but more with the, yeah. the NIL front? Yeah, you're exactly right. You know, the, the, the responsibility of a head coach this day and time, every day it seems like there's something more that you need to do. So. You know, I, we did uh, something very similar. I did something very similar in 2017 when Chip Lindsey took over the play calling, uh, and I was more of just the head coach. We were very successful that year. I'm going to try to keep that same blueprint. But like you said, like, you know, with all of the NIL and everything that goes with that, it's really almost like a GM. Like some of my role turns into more like a GM in the NFL. So. Yeah, that, that, that definitely is a big part. There's been a tremendous recruiting buzz for UCF this summer with the class you've been able to put together so far for 2024. Can you just kind of speak on those efforts and, and what you've been able to accomplish now that you do have that, as you mentioned, that power by label is so important? Yeah, I mean, recruiting is going great. Uh, there's no doubt about that with this class coming up. Uh, I think it's going to be better here in the, in the future, near future, as far as that goes. And then I think also, like, you know, I think we got a chance to play really good football. And, you know, when you play really good football, that really helps recruiting. There's a, you know, a lot of schools that, 
you know, are doing really well recruiting, but the season hadn't got here. And everything changes when the season gets here. So we're in really good shape right now. And I think we're going to be in really good shape once the season gets here. So the sky's the limit for recruiting at a place like this. And then you look at the 25 class, I mean, you know, we're, we're doing really good too. So it's a good time to be here. A lot of the players told me that they were inspired by what John Rice did in the spring, practicing with them, but also playing baseball, starting yeah. at center field. And all the work he did really was an eye opener for them. Like, hey, I got to work harder. Have you noticed that from the players? And what was it like from your perspective, yeah. seeing him, what he did in the yeah, spring? I, I think, first of all, if you're a player and your starting quarterback is playing baseball, there's a little initial like, oh, is he going to be able to really get better at what he needs to? The fact that not only he did that, but he came and he brought his A game every day. It was really amazing to watch. And I think that was really the key that our player was. Wow, how's he doing? And to be honest with you, late in the spring, and I was wondering how he was doing it too. Because to play at the high level he did and to bring his emotional A game every practice and actually get better, that had a whole lot to do with his teammates saying that. You know, you'll find out a lot after the first scrimmage but do you feel like you have power five depth? I knew you'd say that that was a really important part of the transport yeah. portal recruiting process to feel like, you know, you could yeah. go toe to toe with some of these things. How are you feeling about your depth? Yeah, yeah, I feel as good as you can right now. You just said it, the scrimmage, I'll know more, but just, you know, on paper with the guys we recruited and brought in, uh, we have more depth, quality depth than we've had, I think by quite a bit. And of course, obviously that helps you on special teams and everything that goes with that. But the being season three, is there less of you trying to communicate what your standard is and more of just everyone understanding that and just going with the process? It, you know, the great thing is I've got the guys that have been with me. This will be the third year. Most of them are our leaders. But when you bring in 18 transfers, you know, in this day and time, you've got freshmen coming in. There's still that bonding and there's still that raise your level to meet the standard. Uh, but as far as our core group that's been with me for two years, yeah. That, that group has it figured out. You brought in uh, Coach Bentley and, and you leads the staff as well. Can you, and, and then you have Hinshaw as the new offensive coordinator. I just wanted to ask, because you know you have such a deep coaching role at X, when you have a, a job open to fill out, well, what makes you either go to your role at X or yeah. find somebody that's a little outside? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm gonna find a good person. I'm gonna find a good person that fits within our culture, a good person that uh, will be great examples for our players. You know, what a great dad looks like, what a great husband looks like and a person that's truly going to care about our players more than what they can do on the field. And uh, those guys you just said, they fit. You know, the unique thing about Darren Henshaw is, you know, he was off the field uh, the first year. And to be honest with you, I really didn't know him that well. And boy, he just is a super human being. He's everything that is talked about. And so that had a lot to do with me bringing him back. And then the fact that he was here and loves his place, has a passion for this place. So. But, uh, you know, Will Healy, Bobby Bentley, he's an old high school coaching buddy. We used to coach against each other in national seven-on-sevens. Uh, I recruited Marcus Lattimore when he was a high school coach and came about that close to getting him, but he ended up staying home. And so that's how our relationship started. I hired him off the field at, at Auburn. And uh, so, you know, I'm glad to have him back. He's a really, really good coach. There's that line that everyone seems to love, the future of college football is yeah. in Orlando. Yeah. Do you ever take a moment to kind of stop and think about when that was said to where yeah. you guys are right now? Yeah, no, no, you know, so I got hired at 9 p.m. on Sunday night in Auburn, Alabama, and I got on a plane at 8, and I landed, I think, here at 10, uh, 10.30 Eastern time, and I had a presser like at noon. And so I didn't have a lot of time to, like, prepare for a presser like you normally know, So what came to my mind, like, I always told our, our coaches, like, that place is a gold mine. And uh, if the right guy got there and not looking to leave and all that to stay there, you just see it. So I just said, man, that's the future of college football. So that wasn't like a, a marketing campaign that we had other than that. was just from heart. Now that I've been here uh, two years, I truly believe it more. And it's set, and I, it's going to be hard. You know, we have to be competitive in, with the collectives. and, and I, But I think we're trending in the right direction with that. But... You know, that's, that's a big question. Everything else is completely set, and uh, so it feels really good. Just from being on campus and being around Orlando, how much buzz have you felt and noticed as this debut gets ready to start? Yeah, it just feels different. I've been here for a little over two years, and I'll just be driving down the road, whether it's Orlando or Winter Park. It's UCF license plate, like 
it just seems like more and more. And so that trend too, I think, you know, I mean, what do we graduate every year? 20,000, I mean, Fred, we're growing. We're growing faster than everybody else. So the future's gonna be good. You kind of allow yourself to kind of, I, I know you're focused on the day to day. You got practice tomorrow, every day it's something. But the fact that UCF has, has you know, in such a short period of time is now gonna be in the big 12. I mean, you, how exciting is that for you personally? Yeah, I, I think somebody asked, like, the moment, like I can feel the moment. Like I can feel how special this moment is for, you know, our former players, former coaches, our fans, our administration, and like, so I feel it. And, and that is that is rare that you get a chance to be the head coach at a situation where the program is going up, uh, you know, and so I'm just gonna use the same blueprint that I've used in the past that we've been real successful in the Power Five. And, like I said earlier, I mean, there's not a better place to recruit to in all of college football than, than right here in the middle of the state with everything. There's no NFL team. Our players are the NFL team. We just need to win and, and, and win at a high level at this level, and then we'll take off. And like I said, I'll say it again, like there's some of these programs that, and since I've been here, you know, the, and they've got all this momentum and recruiting, then they start playing. And then all of a sudden it goes down like that. We're not going to be one of those programs. How are you a different coach today than you were, say, five, ten years ago as you were starting at all? Yeah. Well, I've, I've got – my hair's a lot grayer, <laughs> all right? And after watching that video that he was talking about, <laughs> I mean, I, I've lost it somehow physically. But besides that, you know, I'm ready to go. We had high school football media days a couple of weeks ago, and UCF came up in a lot of topics. Um, you got high praise from a lot of coaches on how going to the pack, uh, the Big 12 would – change recruiting in this area. You've always wanted to dominate Central Florida. Um, how do you think that will change? You already mentioned it's yeah. great. Well, what we tried to do when we got here is the state of Orlando, keep our top players home, like I said before. And even if the top players, we develop relationships and all that, and they leave somewhere else, we want them to return. And you've already seen that quite a few times already. So that was part of, now that we're in the Power Five, like, you know, we can even put the hammer down a little bit more, but we worked extremely hard. Uh, to develop relationships with these coaches, start recruiting the top players when they're younger. So I really feel like every year these hometown heroes, you know, it'll be more and more. And if we're really going to win a championship here, and I'm talking about like win the whole thing here, it's going to start with our top players right in this area. We keep our top players home, we can win the whole thing. That's what we've been talking about, um, you know, since we've been here, and we're chipping away with that, just trying to make it popular for these guys to come here instead of travel the world at all these those logos and these real you know, popular, so-called popular schools. You, you coached at Shiloh, and now one of your friends is coming from Shiloh to coach at TFA, Coach Conaway. How yeah. cool is that to have somebody from, you know, a, a, yeah. a memory of yours to... Yeah, yeah, I mean, Coach Conaway, first of all, is really good, you know, he's a, he's a friend. He did a super job at Shiloh. That was one of my first schools to, to coach at. I'm excited for him, and uh, yeah, I think he'll do real well. Birds no, not not to film, but they have. There's more birds here than where I'm from. Okay, where I'm used to, and that shocked me. I know that sounds weird to everybody else, but I'm still trying to figure that one out. How do you like Big 12 media days? Just being able to kind of showcase UCF nationally, yeah. and maybe meet some of the fellow head coaches. Yeah. What was that experience? Yeah, the like Big 12 media you? days was really good. I was real proud of our players. Um, you know, I told them to have fun. Um, show their personalities and, and uh, just you know represent our school the right way and man, they just did a super job that was really what stood out to me just how proud I was of those guys and you know I think our group was more excited than anybody there you know some of them were just going through the motions so I thought that was pretty neat too you know any of those coaches in the big 12 or any relationships there uh, yeah yeah all of them to some degree um, you know I'm very familiar with, with quite a few I mean an older coach yeah you know when you're old Joey McGuire actually used to recruit in school you know in Texas now he's a Texas Tech head coach so he's no high school coach buddy and you know a guy that I rooted for in the past obviously this year we play him or not but he's a great guy but you mentioned that the role that you have with the team now is similar to what you had with Alder in 2017 what did you learn from having that role in 2017 that you want to apply yeah to change no no I, I think the football piece I'm going to keep the same Playing. I mean, we were really good. 
uh, with the SEC championship and all that. It's just all the other stuff that has added. It'll give me a little more time to focus on those things uh, than X's and O's, you know, 16 hours uh, a day. That's probably the biggest difference. Good. Thank you, Coach. 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 Thank you, Coach.